Hey, it worked. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry, I was just trying to see if I could switch cameras in the middle of a Facebook Live, and it turns out that I can. Well, welcome to the Science Garage. Uh, we're not in the science basement this week, because here in the Science Garage, I don't know if you can hear the barking of the science dogs, but they're going to be doing that probably the whole time. Here in the Science Garage, I have a workbench. And I am going to use my workbench. Oh, by the way, it's a science garage because I do science here sometimes and also T-Rex skeleton. Okay. I'm going to use my workbench and one of my tools to take apart this broken robot right here. Okay, this is called a Sphero Spark Plus. And this Sphero Spark Plus came from the Children's Museum. We actually use them in one of our field trip programs where we teach students how to code using the Sphero. It's a very simple robot. It can move, it can light up, it can make noises, and you can code on it, or code on it. You can code it with an iPad. Now this one stopped working a while ago. Uh, see, the battery will only hold a charge for about two minutes, even at a maximum charge. That happens with lithium ion batteries sometimes. They just like, get old and they build up some corrosion on one of the contacts and suddenly the uh, ions can't flow anymore and it can't carry an electrical charge as far as it wants to or as far as you want it to rather so i took it home and it's been actually sitting in this vice that you saw it in before let me switch back uh for about four months just kind of waiting for me to take it apart because i wanted to see what was inside of it better than you can through the shell and uh, I figured now's a good time as any to do it so we can explore it together. Oh, hi, Delaney and Liam from Kansas. I can see your comment the way I'm doing this one. It's a little different from the way I did the last one. And I'm going to wave to Megan. Hi, Megan. Okay, so real quick, I want to look at this close up. You can see that I actually started taking it apart the other day. Uh, I wanted to make sure that it didn't take, you know, like 10 minutes to saw through the outer shell and then you're sitting here watching me do that and it's super boring because, hey, I've never opened one of these before and uh, I want it to go as quick and painless as possible. One thing you can see is we actually have some melted plastic. So here's what I'm going to use to cut through, what I already did. It's a Dremel, it's a rotary tool. So right here is going to, it spins and it cuts through the plastic and as it spins it creates friction. Now, anybody who has heard of friction before knows that friction can create a lot of heat. When things are rubbing together, some of the energy gets turned into heat. And if you ever rub your hands together back and forth really fast like this, you can feel that heat. Well, imagine that thousands of times a minute going through this plastic. In addition to cutting through it, it's going to melt it from the heat from the friction. So that's what you're seeing right there. Now, of course, I'm going to use some safety gear as I cut through the rest of this. I have it over here. I'm gonna wear my work gloves. I have this face mask I'm gonna put on just in case any of that melted plastic wants to fly towards my head. And this old painter's hat, I'm gonna put that on right now just so I don't get any plastic stuck in my hair. Not really a safety thing so much as a vanity thing. Oh. Okay. Give me one second. Gonna have a real boring shot of the vice as I get this face screen on. You can probably still hear me, but it probably sounds a little weird. Now, I'm gonna set this up. There we go. Get my drill out of the background now. That's weird. And once I have my gloves on, both of them. We're going to turn on this Dremel and I'm going to saw through the rest of the robot and then we'll see what is inside. All right, give me just a couple of minutes here. I think I got it. Let's find out. All right. So let's see. Did I get all the way through it? Ooh, looks like I may have missed a couple of spots, but, oops, sorry. There we go. That's okay. 
gonna raise the face shield here. It's gonna take a screwdriver. See if we can crack it open like an egg. Ta-da! Okay, take my safety gear off. Hold the camera like this so we can look at what's inside this Sphero. All right, so there's the eggshell, the outside shell right there. Okay, tried to cut right along the uh, the official seal line so you can get nice, nice halves, more or less perfect. All right, let's start at the bottom. Let me get this plastic out of the way. Let me switch hands here. It's gonna be a little easier if I do this with my right hand. So right there, oh, I cut into a little bit, but that's okay, it's already broken. This is the bottom of the Sphero. It's a big heavy weight, because even without the shell, you can tell if I try to place the Sphero on its side, it's gonna roll over onto the bottom. That's one of the main features of the Sphero. It's what's called gyroscopically stable. No matter which way you put it, the weight on the bottom will allow it to point down. Oh, look, that came off the top. This appears to be a little bit of stabilization right here because these wheels aren't hooked up to any motors as the ones we'll see on the bottom here in a second are. Now this right here itself is the receiving uh, uh, area for the battery charge. Okay, so Spheros, you don't plug them in because they want them to be waterproof. This is completely, perfectly sealed up, or well, it was until I opened it. So they use what's called inductive charging or wireless charging. Some of you may actually have this on your uh, on your phones where you just lay the phone on a mat and it charges so basically the sphero charger which i didn't take apart because well it still works just fine it's sitting at the museum it could charge other spheros the sphero charger creates an electromagnetic field and then the receiver inside here picks up on that field and translates it into electrical energy for the batteries to use so that way you can charge it through the shell and it doesn't have to, you know, actually plug into anything, just the charger does. Now down here we have a couple of wheels. The Sphero only has two wheels. Ooh, okay, hold on. I see a couple of Phillips head screws. Bear with me. Okay, let's see if I can get those out. Let's see if I can point the camera a little bit further down here. So. I'm kind of making this up as I go, if you haven't been able to tell already. Because I've never taken apart a Sphero. So let's see what we can see. I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. When I was a kid, whenever we had an old piece of technology, an old phone or something that my dad was going to throw away, well, not whenever we did it, but sometimes, I would take it and borrow one of his screwdrivers. Oh, there's the flat tip. And... I would peel it apart just to see what was inside. I didn't know what all the parts were, but that's okay. It's a fun thing to do to explore different pieces of technology. Oh, okay, there we go. So you see that metal coil right there? That is gonna pick up on the electromagnetic field that is coming from the charging station and feed it through these wires here to the batteries, which look like they're underneath these two motors. So, one second, I'm gonna flip that and get it out of the way. Okay, so now, there we go. Not gonna be feeding any batteries anymore. That's all right. Now we have two motors right here, and it looks like, so the motor has a little gear that makes that wheel spin, and this motor makes that wheel spin. And the way you kind of want to think of how a Sphero moves, if you've ever played with one of these before, sits inside the sphere, and as the wheels turn, they make the sphere move kind of in the same way that a hamster makes a hamster wheel move, right? So if the hamster is in a hamster wheel and it's affixed to the side of the hamster cage, it's going to spin and 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 spin. But if you put a hamster in a hamster wheel and it was no longer attached to the side of the hamster cage, uh, it is going to roll across the floor with the hamster inside of it. And that's what the mechanism inside the Sphero does inside the plastic sphere. 
So we have these two motors and it can move in any direction just by which speed and direction each of the wheels is moving. If they're both moving at the same speed in the same direction, it's gonna go either forward or backwards. If they're moving in different directions, it's going to turn at different rates. Okay, it looks like we can simply peel these motors off. Oh, there goes the axle and the wheels. And the motors plug into the battery connections right there. And we can just pop them right out. See this one looks like it's a six pin connector. Yep, right there. And so this one I don't have to cut. I can just pull it. And the batteries are underneath this plastic. Mm -hmm. How do we get this plastic off? How is it attached to the circuit board? That's a good question. And I may not be able to. <sighs> oh, there we go. Fill up screws again. Get these off. Now I'm not an expert in electronics by any stretch of the imagination. But I do know a little bit. I've wired some stuff here and there in my life. Okay, can we get it off? Ah, there we go. Okay, let's look at these batteries first. And it looks like, oh, there are some more, a couple of four pin contacts right there, connecting the batteries to the circuit board because not, the motors aren't the only things that need to get power. And these little battery packs, lithium ion battery packs, oops, camera fell over. Sorry guys, I bumped it. Right there, they're swelling. I don't know if they're supposed to look like this, but my suspicion is they are not supposed to look like that. See, uh, not just repeated charge cycles and sitting on the charger for too long, uh, but heat can be a problem for lithium ion batteries. Um, and, ooh, let's see. Do not throw away. You never want to throw away lithium ion batteries. You want to find a licensed recycling place because there are some uh, fairly dangerous uh, chemicals in here. It's what causes them to work. It's what makes them useful, but it also means you can't just toss them in with regular trash. So I will find a proper way to dispose of them here in a moment. We don't need this anymore. All right, now, last thing. Let's look at the circuit board. A lot of this, whole lot of this, is going to be simply what allows the Sphero to interact with the iPad or the phone or the other tablet that you're using to program it. Let's see, what else is going on here? Oh, this right here, see that? Looks like an antenna that is in fact an antenna. That is the Bluetooth antenna. How do I know? I actually looked that up. I wanted to know what that antenna was. Now, if you've ever played with a Sphero, you may notice that they have a really long range as far as the Bluetooth goes. If you have a set of Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker, it maxes out about 20 to 30 feet. That's because phones and other Bluetooth accessories tend to have an integrated uh, uh, antenna, just like a little flat antenna somewhere integrated under the circuit board. Well, Sphero people wanted you to have a nice long range so you can drive the Sphero around from 50 or 60 feet away. So they gave it a longer protruding antenna that makes it work a little better. Now what I see here is a whole bunch of stuff that I am not qualified to discuss. Probably some integrated circuits basically allow it to be a tiny little computer so it can follow the instructions you give it from the iPad. Over here, we have a little capacitor. A capacitor is kind of like a battery, but also not at all like a battery. So it stores voltage, but uh, not in the same way that a battery does. You have to pump it full of voltage, and then it can give the voltage up over time, whereas a battery can actually store electric current for a long period of time. And you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for something that I didn't see as we piece this apart. The Sphero has a couple of little LED lights. One of them on top, which is not there. I'm not sure where they went. I know they exist. I have played with Spheros enough in my life. Hmm. Are they on? Wait, okay. There's one. There's one right there. And, oh, there are the other two. I, they, I just didn't recognize them. They look way different from the LEDs I'm used to seeing. One, two, three. 
three. These are the main lights. This is kind of the backup light right here. When you tell, you have to tell a Sphero which way is forward. So the gyroscopic stability is always facing the right way. And this little light lights up blue to show you which is the rear end of the Sphero. That's the front of the Sphero and it helps you orient it inside the shell. And then these two lights have a combination of red, green, and blue LEDs inside of them, which allows you with your controlling device to set them to whatever color you want just by changing the combination of red, green, and blue. Okay, what else? Well, that's every part of the Sphero that I know how to explain to you. And obviously, this isn't something that you can easily do at home. But that's why I brought up how when I was a kid, I liked to take apart stuff that was going to get thrown away. You can, with some basic hand tools, take apart simple technology. Now, technology these days is a lot more complicated than it was when I was a kid. That's for absolute sure. But you can still work on older stuff. I wouldn't take apart a flat screen TV or a tablet. The more complicated stuff are, stuff is, especially if it has a screen. It may have some rare earth elements in it that could be dangerous if you have direct exposure to them. But they're just fine when they're inside the mechanism. But, you know, go to a thrift store, a Goodwill shop. See if you can find an old phone or an old printer, some old piece of technology. Just pull it apart. See what's inside. It's kind of fun. Uh, so yeah, there we go. We'll have one last look at our Sphero. Batteries, circuit board. Got our voltage picker up right there. Our motors, and ladies and gentlemen, oops, that's what is inside a Sphero robot. And uh, if you want a Sphero, we just bought ours on the internet. So I will see you next week, everybody. And uh, I, I don't want to preview exactly what I'm going to be doing next Tuesday because who knows, that might change, but it's going to be fun. And if it... Stop, dogs. And if it, if it goes the way I want it to do, it's going to involve cats, all right? So have a great week, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.